Hello everyone, welcome back to Razer Space and Microsoft Flight Sims. Somebody in the comments to a previous video on the Top Mock Studios F-22 asked what my thoughts were about the plane. I uh, wasn't satisfied with my summary of thoughts in that video. And I'll explain why I don't really give a definitive answer about planes uh, while I fly. But I'll fly it again because things have changed. We've had sim updates. Uh, the dynamics of the planes have changed somewhat. And also the plane itself has been updated. And so it's worth trying it out again. And there are two variants of the Top Mock Studios F-22. There's the fly-by-wire version and a no fly-by-wire version. I'm just going to stick to the fly-by-wire version. And we are going to see how it goes. Livery-wise, they're all sort of similar. <laughs> um, they're, they're the realistic uh, ones. Though I, I feel like the Raptor Demo Team one probably looks differently than the Psycom, but I'm not sure. But uh, yeah. Uh, probably there are plenty of liveries to download off of flightsim.to, as you might like. And uh, fuel-wise, uh, we've got the main tanks and the external tanks. And I think if we drop these, we probably don't have the external tanks visible, maybe? I want to test that out, actually. Uh, I have flown it, and I had the uh, external tanks visible. And I'm going to see if the external tanks go away if we have these at zero, I'm not sure. So we'll try that and we'll try it out at Nellis. Okay, we see that the external tanks aren't listed in the fuel display and outside... Yep, they're gone, so we're clean. So when it comes to planes, as I, I give you a look of the exterior model, the thing is that different people want different things out of planes. Uh, some people are more airliner pilots, some people are more vintage pilots, some people like general aviation and some people like fighter planes and among the fighter plane peoples uh, I, I would say there are two classes uh, there are those that want a very realistic feel to it an organic feel to it and others that want to zoom around and are happy with a fly-by-wire feel and I guess that's why this uh, plane comes with the two versions the no fly-by-wire and fly-by-wire because there are to some extent two different groups on that and if you play DCS World, it's sort of like the people who really, really like flying the F-14 versus those who might prefer to fly. And there's, irregardless of the weapons, we're just talking about how it handles and how it feels to fly the plane, uh, fly the F-A-18. And, you know, the F-A-18 is much more straightforward as far as the flying is concerned. But F-14, uh, you know, it feels like a more organic sort of beast. And... Of course, with the fly-by-wire, the F-22 is not going to feel especially organic, and we'll talk about that. Uh, but different people will have different preferences about what they want from the plane. And also, the exter exterior model, because it's uh, with, you know, modern materials, it, it looks sort of plastic because composites are sort of like that. And if you want the sort of weathering that you get from uh, more uh, metallic structure, then it's got to be a little bit different. Uh, Cockpit-wise, also, there is the difference between people who want a more analog cockpit with dials and such, and those who uh, like these displays. And, uh, you know, over time, there have been fewer and fewer flick switches on the sides uh, for the pilots to toggle, and with the F-35, they're practically non-existent. We've got some weird flashiness on that there. Uh, as I turn the camera. But you'll notice the F-22 is sort of in the middle. It has some uh, flick switches and stuff on the side, many of them inoperable. Uh, so there's apparently a fuel dump. I don't know if that works. It doesn't say in-op. But uh, this, like this alt flaps in-op and stuff like that does happen. So, but uh, the fly-by-wire enable apparently uh, has an on-off switch. However, it says do not turn off. That's why they have a different version for the no fly-by-wire because it's just not going to operate the same way. But we have some array of switches, but you know, it all looks fairly clean because the F-22 is a relatively new plane and uh, you don't expect too much weathering, though they did a nice bit of tasteful weathering. So as far as the things I like to talk about, it's not so much whether the plane is worth it or not, or whether I say buy it or don't buy it. It's like I'll tell you, well, the cockpit looks like this, the exterior model looks like that, and here's how it handles, and here's how it matches the performance of the real thing, and then let you decide. So here's the cockpit. <laughs> this is how it looks, 
and uh, you can see the HUD. The HUD works fine, and we'll take off. Uh, it is very squirrely on the ground. Which is interesting for a fly-by-wire plane in a way. Its takeoff speed can be relatively low if you want it to be. Because it's got a huge wing. So now we're off afterburner. I had afterburner on. Uh, the nozzle display over here uh, lights up in yellow when the afterburner's on. You can sort of tell by the fuel flow. Uh, see, the fuel flow went from 18 or 19,000 to 25,000 on each engine, and then nozzle it up. But we seriously don't need to have the afterburner on to climb at a decent rate with this. So this is a more sort of fun plane, and certainly uh, on my around the world in eight planes flights, uh, my compatriots who tried to follow along with me, Pekka and Toby, used this plane a lot. Go to a fairly low speed without any problems. Right now we're at 130, 120 knots. 110. You can see here, 90, 80. And the fly-by-wire does a Herculean job trying to keep us steady as we do this. I'm pushing down right now, it isn't. So it can fly very low speeds fairly well. You can see uh, we're basically falling straight down. You can tell by the vertical speed there, negative uh, 7,000. We're like falling like a rock, but then it catches itself. So those are some of the things, and now the, the vector, the velocity vector is picking up here as we pick up speed. So that's one of the things that the F-22 can do uh, that makes it special. Uh, another thing is the extremely high consumption of propellant when you're on afterburner. Uh, so right now we're at 30, 13,000 pounds per hour and if we push it, you know, this level of afterburner is 18,000, 24,000, 32,000 basically and it goes all the way up to 56,000. So going from afterburner off to afterburner full, you more than triple your fuel consumption. So unless you really, really need to go to Mach 2, which you can, uh, I don't recommend using full afterburner. Here without afterburner on, we're at Mach 1.05, 1.06 and climbing. We're only at 22,000 feet as well. Let's try and bring it up here to get better fuel efficiency. And it does at higher altitudes. Now, we can carry the external tanks and that'll help our range tremendously. It flies exceedingly smoothly because of the fly-by-wire. One thing about the fly-by-wire is that in circum circum certain circumstances, it tends to pitch down over time. And that's a little bit annoying, but, you know, compared to having to trim it out manually, it's hardly a thing. Uh, for those unfamiliar with what a fly-by-wire does, it basically auto-trims everything. So you wouldn't be using your pitch trim with this. You wouldn't try to trim it out at all. You just set the pitch to where you want it to be, and then the fly-by-wire will try to maintain that pitch. Or it really the orientation, right? So not just the pitch, the general orientation, it will hang on to that orientation. Now, as far as the F-22 being able to break the sound barrier and stay at Mach 1.3, I, I believe it, uh, without the afterburner, I mean, I believe it. Now, the afterburner is off as far as everything here is concerned. Let's just check. It is off here, and then we can turn it on. That's what it looks like. And again, there's many, many levels of afterburner with this. So you can have a little bit of afterburner if you'd like. And has tremendous momentum. Uh, right now we are carrying uh, 14,000 pounds of fuel and each engine is consuming 25,000 pounds. Let's try and go up quite a lot more to get better fuel efficiency so that we can get an hour out of them. You can see our ground speed there, 851 at the moment. So personally speaking, I do like analog cockpits more and uh, I like the organic feel more than the fly-by-wire feel. 
But as far as fighter jets go in the game right now, uh, this is very good. Um, for sightseeing purposes in particular, the F-35, its ability from Indie Fox Teco, its ability to hover is sort of priceless, really. Uh, though the transition is a little bit, uh, a little bit rough. But given the limitations of the sim, I couldn't expect anything better. Uh, after all, the sim was definitely not meant to create a transition like that at all. So it's very good for sightseeing. As far as being a very satisfying fighter jet to fly, this is very good. It handles very convincingly. But whether it's your kind of plane or not, I can't tell. It would be a good plane to fly cross country with if you want a relaxing flight. Personally, I don't care about having a very smooth flight when I go around the world, so right now I've been recording videos in the Sims Skunk Works F-104 and flying around the world in that. I haven't posted any of those videos, but once I'm done with the around the world flight, I will. And that is a hard plane to handle, but that's more of what I like, generally speaking. And of course, it's more analog than this. When I say analog, I don't mean that it doesn't have any computers. I mean, uh, of course, uh, what I mean is that uh, I'm indicating its feel more than anything else. So right now we have uh, an hour worth of range. We see the fuel quantity is 13,000 or so pounds and the fuel consumption is 12,000 pounds per hour. And we are at Mach 1.35. We can sort of stabilize here. And again, the fly-by-wire should hold the vertical speed. Well, it really should hold the angle. And then you need to figure out what vertical speed would be good. But here we're at zero. Uh, it, 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 I've had it 10 down a little bit over time. But basically, without afterburner, it can go one point, Mach 1.35 and about 800 on the ground speed. And we're at 50,000 feet. At a certain point, it doesn't like the cabin pressure anymore, so you can go up higher than this, but eventually you'll complain. And again, this without the external tanks, we can go for an hour like this. And we're going past Mach 1. Now, trying to go past Mach 2. So now I will, uh, I won't put well, at full afterburner right now, the fuel consumption is 23,000 pounds per hour per engine, uh, which is still, you know, more than three times what it was before. But let's see how it does. So we are climbing and increasing our Mach speed, and we'll see where we get. Some of the things I would look for in a plane to see whether it's worthwhile is whether it has custom displays rather than having the generic displays, uh, you know, just using what the sim already has, or obviously custom dials and gauges and stuff like that. You know, a custom cockpit. Uh, you know, some of this is fairly generic, some of it is customized. The cockpit is where a lot of the effort goes into the coding and all that business. So we can see that with the with three times the fuel consumption, it's not like accelerating super duper here. So that's why I uh, tend to say lay off of the lay off of the heavy afterburner use. And our cabin pressure is in red, that uh, yellow there, and it'll eventually be in red. It's in yellow. It'll also have a beep to complain. There's the beep at sixty thousand. So here, when I sort of set the pitch here and let go of the stick. You'll see that eventually it starts sort of nosing down anyway. So I don't know, I don't know, the fly-by-wire, I guess maybe it's just to keep us awake or something. Fly-by-wire is like that. So to be honest, I don't think it's liking 60,000 feet anyway. It'll go down a little bit. I mean, texturing, I haven't sat in an F-22 cockpit, but I feel like certain parts of it probably are more complicated than this, like this panel right here. But then again, again, it is 
composite. So it's tough. Mach 2.01 and positive vertical speed there, Mach 2.02. Ground speed nearing 1,200 meters, uh, 1,200, 1,200 knots, not meters per second, 1,200 knots. But again, we are not going to last long like this. Um, basically, less than 12 minutes right now. But we to get to Mach 2.12, and it's pushing it. So, if you want a fast flight, this is pretty good, and it's not doing anything too unrealistic to do it. You know, looking at the Dark Star or some other fighter planes that might do unrealistic things. Okay, but let's see about the handling at low altitude. Uh, you know, a lot of times people want to have fun at lower altitudes. So I'm going to cut the power and dive dramatically. Oop! Red out. That happens. As far as having a spoiler, it's got the rudder sort of air brake system. And that's what it does to our speed. The rudders, you know, it, the rudders don't look like they can do that much, but maybe they can. A mild altitude warning. So then we're in this mode. I'm pouring on all the afterburner here, which it will not last us long. It will not last us long here. Okay, well there, it doesn't like 800 knots indicated. That's probably the limit. That's not an unusual limit. Okay. Nice shutter. Pulling some G's here and there. But yeah, uh, very stable and satisfying to fly like this. Yeah, just keeping it right above Mach 1 while doing all this. I get the feeling that the terrain textures just aren't keeping up. I I'm sure they can do better than this. But this is just too fast for them. Ah, okay, lag is not helping. Alright, well anyway. Let me find a nice airport to sit down at. Well, I guess Provo Municipal Airport will be fine. Okay. Well, it's right there. Let's see how fast I can dump fuel and try uh, dump speed and try to land here. I've got the uh, air brakes. Uh, it's it's struggling to load stuff. Uh, it doesn't like me doing this. Oh wow! It's a trouble of going fast sometimes. The sim can't catch up to things. I swear I have a good computer. Okay. Here down. Power. Power. I don't want power. So yeah. It's a fun plane to fly, but generally I like more of a challenge. It's very easy to fly it, and as you can see, do a dramatic landing with it. Um, 
It depends on what you want, really. If you want an F-22, <laughs> you can hardly go wrong with this. Is Provo Municipal a custom airport? Looks pretty custom. We've got a lot of F-22s hanging out here. I don't know what parking spot I want. Yeah, this seems very popular for F-22s. I'll park over here. <laughs> So that's it for the F-22. I didn't go through any startup procedure. I don't think that's going to be very hard. So there you have it. Uh, I know there's a sale going on, so maybe this will help people make an informed decision about the plane. Uh, but I don't know if uh, my kind of review is very satisfying. You know, I'm not very extreme in my views as far as they are concerned. I appreciate the work that they put in. And so unless they've done something horribly wrong, uh, I'm not going to dump on that. But anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.